Parenting Junkie. Hey, welcome back to The Parenting Junkie, the place to go to love parenting and for parenting from love. I'm Avital, and if you like this type of content, you'll want to subscribe to this channel. So if the button is red, go ahead and click it on YouTube and head on over to theparentingjunkie.com and sign up for email updates there. Uh, That way you'll get a special gift from me just for subscribing and you'll also get notified on upcoming sessions and courses that I release periodically. So if you have a young baby and are looking to introduce solid foods, then you are in the right place. When my first child was tiny, I thought I knew how solids were introduced to babies. You buy some packaged oatmeal or baby cereal or orange smushy stuff in a jar and attempt to deliver said mush into baby's mouth via a spoon. With frustration, of course, because as we all know, much of it will end up on the floor. And eventually you offer soft cooked vegetables like mushy carrots and with time some peeled apples maybe. And finally, when their teeth start coming in slightly more firm options too. Babies need to be taught how to eat. No, no. It turns out that just like learning to walk, learning to eat and to potty, I might add, can be a gradual, natural process without much intervention on the parent's part, apart from just providing the safe opportunity and following the child's lead. So I was lucky to come across the concept of baby led weaning when my first was about three or four months old. And I'm going to convey it to you here in a nutshell, but I strongly urge you to do your own research and to follow this method because I think it's fantastic. So the idea is this, you follow your baby's lead and as they show interest in your food, uh, you offer them to self-feed finger foods from the family's meal. So if you're not sure how this works or why this works, let me break it down. But first, a little disclaimer, I'm not a physician, a scientist or any kind of expert. The information I bring here is based on my own experience with following this method from the books I've read, which I'll provide to you in the resources. Um, with my three children uh, and the articles I've read on the topic. I will list these for you. And just to really uh, cover myself here, uh, please always apply your own common sense and ask your pediatrician before making these decisions, although I must admit that I don't do that. Um, I rely on my research mostly. Um, Okay, so question number one, don't babies need to be spoon fed? No. Babies, just like everyone else, don't usually like to be spoon fed. Usually they try to grab the spoon and control it themselves. Spoon feeding means that the adult controls the portion and the cadence and the food that the baby is being fed. Babies, just like every other living thing, seek autonomy over their experience and want to explore food for themselves without having it literally shoved in their mouth. Plus, allowing babies to self-feed offers ample opportunities to develop important fine motor skills such as the pincer grip and hand-eye coordination opportunities, which are all opportunities that are lost when the adult does all of the work. So you might be asking, but babies don't have teeth. How can they chew solid food? Well, it's actually wrong that they can't chew solid food without teeth. Babies' gums are very strong and they can chew and gnaw at pretty solid foods very effectively, even way before their teeth come in. Another common misconception is this, milk supply dwindles at about six months and there's no more nutritional value anyway. Don't we need to pump up their caloric intake at the age of six months or so? Um, And the truth is that unless there is some special concern, so ask your pediatrician if there is, most babies will have milk as their main food supply until they're around one years old, which is when gradually the scale starts to tip in favor of solid food, making up more of their diet. The saying goes, food is fun until one. Uh, In other words, it's for fun. It's for exploration, not for caloric intake. So there's no real concern about pumping them up with calories beyond their milk before the age of one. It's a misconception also that many of us, especially in the USA, have been holding on to that a mother's milk supply, if she is breastfeeding, isn't enough at this age and that it needs to be supplemented with extra foods such as cereals, oatmeals, porridges and purees. In fact, filling a baby up on additional foods may decrease their breastfeeding, which in turn reduces the mother's milk supply. So in this case, it's clear which is the chicken and which is the egg. In other words, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. 
In normal, healthy babies and mothers, milk doesn't dwindle unless the baby's diet is purposely being supplemented. And in fact, the opposite is true. The more the baby nurses, the more appropriate the mother's milk supply is to the baby's needs. So the answer to a usually perceived milk supply issue would be more, not less nursing. Okay, you're asking, but babies can choke on solid foods. And yes, this is true. We all can choke on solid foods and babies can choke on pureed foods too. But according to the baby led weaning philosophy, choking is actually less, not more likely with solid non pureed foods. Why? Because the process of learning to eat with solid foods involves chewing first and only swallowing afterwards. When we spoon feed mush, the opposite happens. Babies expect to follow first, which means they're skipping an important part of the process. When babies are given sufficient control over their eating, they usually learn to eat correctly and safely. Although almost all babies will have a few gagging moments, whichever way they begin solids. Baby led weaned babies, at least mine, typically seem to correct any small gagging quickly and without assistance. Even so, all of the safety rules apply and every baby who's just learning to eat should always be sitting upright, never reclining. They should be watched by an adult and they should never be fed nuts or other choking hazards like carrots. Another question that comes along is, but I want my baby on solids so that I can wean from milk or from breastfeeding. And I think we just have to mention that it's a shame that our culture is robbing mothers and babies from the opportunity to continue their full term breastfeeding until a more natural weaning occurs. Um, I feel myself that this has happened to me. I have nursed longer and longer with each child that I've had as I've learned more and more of the benefits and possibilities And as I overcome my own misguided preconceived notions, one of my favorites was when I used to say, if they're old enough to ask for it, they're old enough to have it. I can't believe I said that. Um, And I also used to think that it becomes gross at a certain age. You know, these are exactly the type of poisonous uh, misconceptions that we're fed by culture. If nursing doesn't work for you for whatever reason, or if it's not an option, then that is absolutely fine and valid. It should be a choice, of course. But for those of us who want to and were able to breastfeed, why are we being pushed by pediatricians, mothers-in-laws, nurses and teachers to wean by the time our babies hit one years old? Why are we not being exposed to the fact that babies around the world nurse at the very least into toddlerhood and often beyond? Pediatricians pushing mothers to introduce solids more aggressively in order to actively reduce the baby's milk intake are actually sabotaging what is, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful, nourishing, and free ways to nurture and nourish our young children's body and soul. What about allergic reactions? Well, it actually appears that introducing more allergens earlier in the game, and the window is apparently now said to be four to six months, but do your own research, reduces the chance of allergies. I myself am from Israel, where peanut allergies and any food allergies, in fact, are almost unheard of. I've literally never met a child with a peanut allergy or any other allergy in Israel. That is because Israeli babies are eating bamba, which is a national soft snack made from puffed beans, uh, sorry, puffed peanuts, by the time they're six months old. Even before my babies have shown interest in solid foods, which usually is them reaching for food or reaching for the spoon or staring at you eating. So even though they, before they've shown that interest, I have just swabbed their tongues, just swiped their tongues with known allergens like peanut butter, almond butter, strawberries, fish. And that's in order to expose their bodies to those allergens between the ages of four months and six months. And that is said to reduce the likelihood of their developing allergies. The rule is that we want to introduce one food at a time, one new food per day or even every few days. And this way, if there is a problem, we know which food caused it and what to watch for. So we we introduce one food and then we watch for a reaction for the next day or two. Another question that comes is, but the baby will throw food all over the place. And my answer to this is yes, she will. Baby led weaning is messy. Usually all types of feeding, unless you're hyper controlling, are going to have some mess. But if your baby does start to repetitively throw the food on the floor, then that's a good indicator that she's no longer interested and mealtime can just be over at that point. 
So can you hear yourself saying, but I love to cook a separate meal for my baby and mush it up and store it separately in containers? I didn't think so. Most people don't want to have to cook and mush up separate meals just for their babies. And seriously, the benefits of simply feeding what you're already cooking are huge. It saves time and energy, and that's reason enough to go this route. But further, having a baby as a participating member of the family who's joining in the same meal is great for them too. It's what they naturally are inclined to do. They like to be part of what we're doing and mimic us. And where better to learn healthy eating habits and polite ones further down the line than in the family meal? Babies who feed themselves stay in touch with their internal fullness barometer. Right? In contrast to the adult who might be determined to get the whole damn jar into that baby, the self-feeding baby doesn't eat past satiation. And I think this is critical in maintaining their attunement to their bodies and needs, and it will set them up for success with future portion control. Finally, babies who are baby-led weaned are said to be far less picky eaters. Why? Because they get to explore a wide variety of tastes, textures, and colors, not just the same old mush every single meal. This will likely make them into much more interested in food and in general, more more exposed to trying foods that look different and new. Mealtime should never be a power struggle, and that starts from the very first meal of our children's lives. So if you want to dive deeper into baby-led weaning and struggle-free meals, you can absolutely go and dive into further resources on this. So one of the biggest ones is the book Baby Led Weaning by Gil Rapley and Tracy Marquette. Um, Another great resource is Ellen Satter and all of her work, uh, particularly the book Child of Mine, Feeding with Love and Good Sense. Um, You can also check out my uh, video on struggle-free meals and uh, the role play episode I've done with Dr. Laura Markham on picky eating uh, for older ages. So if you like this episode, I hope you'll share it with whoever it might help. Uh, Please tag your friends, share it with them, anyone who has a young baby. And of course, subscribe to the channel and uh, subscribe to the newsletter on theparentingjunkie.com so you're sure never to miss an episode. Keep on loving parenting and parenting from love because your kids need you almost as much as you need them. Goodbye. The Parenting Junkie.